All right, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, you're excited about uh, getting into the EKG stuff, so let's delve right into it. So in this video, we're going to look at all of the different sinus rhythms, all of the things that originate in the SA node. Anything that originates in the SA node is said to be a sinus rhythm. So let's take a look here, and let's go right into it. So as I mentioned, in order for us to call something a sinus rhythm, it's got to start right here in the SA node. All right. So anything that we're going to call a sinus rhythm means that it's going to have some common characteristics because if you put the EKG electrodes and the stickies where they're supposed to go and it the impulse that originates, uh, if it originates from the same place every time from the SA node, then it's going to travel down here and it's going to create a very specific pattern on the EKG and these characteristics are going to show up on the tracing for us to see. So these are the common characteristics of all the sinus rhythms. There's going to be one P wave and only one P wave for every QRS complex. The P wave must come before the QRS complex. It's got to precede the QRS complex. And it'll have this nice upright and rounded shape that we talked about so many times already. So commonly and, or, or characteristically, these things are going to occur every single time we have a sinus rhythm. So let's take a look at the four sinus rhythms that we need to uh, be focused on for now. And the four sinus rhythms are going to be normal or regular sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, sinus arrhythmia. And you'll note really that once you get this guy down, once you get the rules for normal sinus rhythm down, you'll notice that getting from normal sinus rhythm to sinus brady, the only difference here is the rate. The only difference between normal sinus rhythm and sinus tac is the rate the only difference between sinus arrhythmia and normal sinus rhythm is the rhythm or the regularity. So just by changing one little variable, we're going to be able to come up with a whole new underlying rhythm. So let's take a look through these, and, uh, and you'll have these to serve as a, as a reference for, for the future in addition to your book. All right, so let's pick out the rate first. So let's do the ventricular rate, and we're going to find our QRS complexes, and let's just use the sequence method here. We're going to say we have 300, 150, 100, 75, and 60. So it's right around 60. Let's just call it 60. All right, 60 beats per minute. Now, let's look at the regularity of the rhythm. Is the distance between these QRS complexes the same or not? So you can hold up a little piece of paper if you want to your screen. Don't draw on your screen, but put a little hash mark on the paper, and you'll see that the QRSs are absolutely regular. So yes, this is regular. Now we're going to look for the presence of P waves. So we're going to find QRSs. These are the guys that stand out. And we're going to go immediately before the QRS complex, and we're going to look for an upright and rounded shape. And if we find one, we're going to call it a P wave. So we're going to look. Here there's a P wave. Here there's a P wave. Yep, man, this thing has perfect looking P waves. They don't look to be too tall. They look to be nice and rounded. So yes, we're going to say there is a P wave, and there's one for every QRS complex since we don't see P waves anywhere else on this EKG trace, except for right before the QRS. Now we're going to measure the PR duration, the, the PR interval duration, and I'm going to do so just by, again, putting a little line right at the beginning of the P wave, right at the beginning of the QRS complex there, and we're going to count the numbers. One, two, three, again, four small boxes, 160 milliseconds. Perfect. And last but not least, we'll look at the QRS duration. So I've already identified where my QRS Stop uh, begins. Let me find where it starts. Stops, and here we have about two and a half small boxes. Let's call that 100 milliseconds. So, all of the sinus rhythms will have a P wave. It'll be upright. It'll be rounded. Um, and then we're going to look at these rules now. So the rule is, if you have a rate that falls between 60 and 100 for the rate, and we have a regular rhythm regular and we have P waves and only one and upright and we have a PR duration of less than 200 milliseconds and we have a QRS duration of less than 120 milliseconds we're gonna call those the sinus rhythms and actually very specifically in this rate range we're gonna call it normal sinus rhythm or regular sinus rhythm so regular sinus rhythm is characterized by a rate between 60 and 100 a rhythm regularity that is regular one and only one P wave that precedes the QRS complex, a normal duration PRI, and a normal duration QRS. All right, let's move on to the next one. So let's take a look at this guy here. So we're going to take a look at this guy and do exactly the same thing we just did. 
This time we're going to look at the rate. So let's look here. This is actually a six second strip, but let's see here. If we started with the rate, we could do 300, 150, 175, 60. All right, so we could do 50, 47, 43, 40. We're right around like the 41, 42. If you don't know the sequence out that far, that's fine. You probably stopped at 75 or 60. Let's count the six second method. One, two, three, four. Our rate is 40. And I'm going to put a V next to it because that's our ventricular rate. Regularity. Let's look. Is the distance between QRS is the same? Yes, it is. So this is regular. Are there P waves that are nice and upright and rounded that precede the QRS complex? And is there only one for every QRS? Well, this is a P wave. Are there any others here? I don't see any others here. So there's one for every QRS. Check. And it's upright. All right, let's look at the PR interval duration. So we can put a little line here and a little line here, and we'll count the numbers, about one, two, three, about four. A little less than four, let's call it 160 milliseconds. And the QRS duration here ends right there at the J point. We'll say one, two, and change. So let's call it 100 milliseconds. All right, so guess what? Same as normal sinus rhythm, same as normal sinus rhythm, same as normal sinus rhythm, same as normal sinus rhythm. The only difference here is the rate. So when you have regular rhythm with P waves and only one for every QRS complex with a normal PRI, PRI less than 200, and a QRS, whoops, QRS less than 120, and the rate is less than 60, we're going to call that sinus bradycardia. So it's still sinus node because there are P waves. It just happens to be brady, slow, cardia, slow heart. Sinus bradycardia. So sinus bradycardia characterized by heart rate less than 60, regular rhythm, P waves, normal duration PR, normal duration QRS complex. All right, let's take a look at the next guy here. Again, the approach is exactly the same. Let's look at the rate. Now, I would probably use a uh, six second method or a 10 second method here. It looks like this is a 10 second strip, but we can also use the sequence method. It's going to be pretty darn close. So let's start on a line. Let's see if we can use this right here. We'll do this 150. I'm sorry, 300, 150. So it's right around 150. I'm going to call it 150. If you look at the distance between each and every single one of these QRS complexes, it's the same. So it's regular. If you look just before the QRS complex, you'll notice these little guys right here. Those little guys right here are P waves. So, yep, and they're upright. Now, the PR duration is a little harder here because it's, it's hard to find exactly where this is. So you start right before this P wave deflection takes place and right at the QRS complex. And I think the other thing is the quality of the tracings here kind of crappy. But I think we're right around three boxes. So we're going to call this 120 milliseconds. And the QRS duration, again, the quality of the trace here, I apologize, is about a box and a half, uh, maybe two boxes. Let's call it 60 milliseconds. All right, so you'll notice this is normal, this is normal, this is normal, this is normal. The only change here is with the rate, and we're going to say if the rate is greater than 100 and these parameters are the same as sinus rhythm, we're going to call this sinus tachycardia. All right, tachy means fast, cardia, heart, fast heart rate. All right, let's take a look at the last um, interpretation here, and we're going to take a look at the same approach as we have. Let's look at the rate first. Now, this is irregular. Um, I'm hoping this is a, a six-second strip, so let's just count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's not a six-second strip. This is probably a four-second strip, which means we'll have to multiply it by 15. So let's take a look again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six beats. 15 seconds, which means we're going to have to, um, I'm sorry, this is, let me go back here just for a second. This is not 15 here. This is a four second strip. Um, so six beats, and we're going to multiply by 15, and that's going to give us, what, 90 beats, roughly. All right, it might be a little slower than that. Uh, we could calculate, we could count the number of big boxes here. Each five big box section is one second. I'm not going to take the time to do that now, but let's just call it right around 90 beats per minute. All right, now let's look at the regularity here. Is the distance here the same as the distance here or here or here? And the answer I think you'll find is that it is irregularly irregular. 
So this is one of our five irregularly irregular rhythms that you'll learn. Are there P waves? Well, yep, they're right here. P waves are present. They're preceding each QRS complex, and they're upright. They're not quite as rounded as I'd like to see them, but they're, we're going to call them pretty normal for now. So check, and they're upright. All right, let me get rid of some of this mess that I've put on here, and let's look at the PR interval duration. We're going to do that by marking the beginning of the P wave end of PR segment right about here and we're going to call that about four or maybe four and change boxes let's call it 180 milliseconds right around there if you said 160 that's fine too let's look at the QRS duration again let me get rid of some of this mess and if you look at the QRS duration here we start right on this pink grid line and we end right before the next one so we're at like one and a half small boxes 60 milliseconds alright so when the rate is between 60 and 100 and the P wave is normal and the PR interval is normal and the QRS is normal, the only thing that's different is the regularity. We call this rhythm sinus because there are P waves. Dis, which means abnormal or dysfunctional, and rhythm. So we have an abnormal rhythm in terms of its irregularity. So this is sinus dysrhythmia. So sinus dysrhythmia is characterized by a normal heart rate, normal everything except for rhythm, which is irregularly irregular. All right, so that's it for the sinus rhythms. There are only four of them that you have to know for now. And uh, next installment, we'll look at the atrial rhythms.